Mr Speaker, I move that this House acknowledges the State Government's commitment to significantly increasing training participation in South Australia, specifically through the Skilling South Australia initiative, recognises the State Government's investment of $100 million to secure matched Commonwealth funding through the Skilling Australians Fund to create an additional 20,815 apprenticeships and traineeships in South Australia over the next four years and acknowledges the State Government's reforms giving industry a stronger voice in South Australia's training system and supporting young people by implementing flexible apprenticeship pathways. Our new Liberal Government supports this great South Australian initiative. I'm so proud to be part of a government focused on delivering what our community is asking for, which is a future for our young people and will build the capacity of South Australia and strong foundations for our future generations. We have a steadfast commitment to significantly increase training participation in South Australia, specifically through this initiative. Our commitment to this initiative is so strong because our South Australia's unemployment during Labor's 16 years in government has been the highest of the mainland states for almost half of that time. As I discussed in my maiden speech, so many people told me that what they most wanted to see was more jobs for our young people in South Australia. We care very deeply about this. Despite our sad unemployment outcomes in the past 16 years, South Australia has also faced skill sh shortages in some key industries, with the number of South Australians in apprenticeships and traineeships more than halving over the past four years. In a rapidly changing world, government investment in training must be connected to delivering on the broader needs of our economy and leading to real jobs and better investment outcomes. Training participation rates over the past five years under Labor are damning. Of particular concern is the drastic fall in youth participation in VET, that's age 15 to 24 years, which fell by 14,700 or 34.9% to 27,400 students. Critically, our state needs to better prepare for the naval shipbuilding job boom by reinvesting in the skilled jobs training sector to guarantee our lion's share of the new shipbuilding jobs go to South Australians. Our government will invest $100 million to create more than 20,000 new places in the vocational education and training system to provide South Australians with more opportunities to secure an apprenticeship or traineeship and a future career in South Australia. Young South Australians need a range of pathways to the jobs of the future and this investment in apprenticeships and traineeships is a central feature of our jobs policy. The initiative will include providing the $100 million to secure match funding from the federal government to create the additional 20,815 apprenticeships and traineeships in South Australia over the next four years. The federal government has established the Skilling Australians Fund to provide ongoing funding for vocational education and training. The fund was announced in the 2017 federal budget, but the South Australian Labor government failed to demonstrate any interest in securing this money from this fund to secure benefits for our state, our young people. We care about our young people and we want to keep them here in South Australia. A Marshall Liberal government will commit to providing 100 million over four years to secure match funding. Joint state federal spending of over 200 million over the next four years will support these 20,815 new apprenticeships and traineeships. This will include apprentices and trainees for occupations in demand, including in particular in the defence sector, industries and sectors of future growth, industry areas struggling with current skills shortages, trade apprenticeships and rural and regional areas. This is a major investment in skills development that will lead to real job outcomes. 
In addition, it will help us establish at least one new technical college in Adelaide's northwestern suburbs with a focus on encouraging students to prepare for work in the defence sector, maintaining financial support for the crucial role of group training organisations in the training sector, implementing a major multifaceted program to encourage more young people to consider pursuing a career through a technical qualification as a first option rather than as a fallback plan encouraging flexible apprenticeship pathways, enabling more young people to be learning and earning at the same time. We want many more students to have the opportunity to undertake their first year of apprenticeship at the end of year 11, rather than waiting until after the end of year 12. We would like to see 1,000 students benefit from taking up a flexible apprenticeship at the end of year 11. Achieving the SACE while undertaking an apprenticeship is currently possible, but very few students are encouraged down this path today. Currently, many students are staying on at school to achieve their SAFE, despite intending to go down vocational pathways. These students who remain in school are, in some cases, becoming disengaged and would rather be out in the workforce earning money. The community expectation to complete Year 12 and SACE can delay these students from entering the workforce. By commencing their apprenticeship a year early, in effect, these apprentices would gain their qualifications a full year ahead of students undertaking a standard route or regular school-based apprenticeship while attaining their SACE qualification along the way. It is also attractive for businesses to engage apprentices before they turn 18 so that their training is complete when they are 20. While I was door knocking in King, both business owners and parents told me they wish our young people to have more opportunity to start apprenticeships earlier. We are listening to our community, which is a great segue to the additional benefits of this party's focus on listening to South Australians and businesses. Our state government reforms will give industry a stronger voice in our training system. I am proud to say our Marshall Liberal government will re-establish the industry skills councils to ensure that industry has a stronger voice in TAFE, in vet schools, on the Training and Skills Commission, and they will directly have input into the highest levels of government decision making, including minister and cabinet. In addition, I've been fortunate in my career on boards and on council and working at Service SA to see firsthand the difference we can make by providing additional pre-employment, pre-vocational programs and training opportunities for our youth and to people in our community who may be facing challenges of English as a second language, being long-term unemployed or disengaged. Recently, I've spoken to the CEO of the North Eastern Development Agency, Joanne Munn, to ask how their programs and apprenticeship numbers are going. And she told me the number of people in their apprenticeships are indeed growing. In fact, they've had to hire four uh, more full-time trainers to keep up with the new apprentices. With a lift in confidence, more businesses are contacting NIDA to inquire if there are people who have finished the pre-vocational courses and are ready for apprenticeships. Confidence is lifting. In addition, she told me there have been less cancellations of apprenticeships, which is a great sign. She was also very supportive of our Liberal government commitment to pilot a program to help young people get their licence more easily. We have discussed this in the past. At one, one time when she came to speak to me about this, there were 10 vacancies um, in apprenticeships due to young people not having the support they needed to be able to get their driving licence. When I was working at Service SA, a number of concerned training providers and community members raised this issue of young people keen for an apprenticeship but not being able to get their licence sometimes because of the cost, time and limitations in family support, there is a growing challenge for young apprentices and trainees in relation to the difficulty in obtaining their provisional driver's licence and the right to drive without supervision. 
Many apprenticeship jobs, whether directly working for a business or through a training provider, require that the apprentice be able to drive to work sites as part of the job. However, through a series of the previous government's policies, it's become so much harder for young people to obtain their driver's licence by the age of 17. Our Marshall Liberal government will undertake a 12-month trial of expediting this stage for students who are engaged in a contract of training. As trainees or apprentices who are required to drive for their employment by reducing the time required on the L plates from 12 months to six months, all other requirements, including the compulsory driving hours and the hazard perception test, would still be required. Mr Speaker, I have seen firsthand the outcomes for, for participants engaged in the pre-employment, pre-vocational and apprenticeship programs. I have seen the excellent enthusiasm and attendance rates of participants who were previously lacking confidence or disengaged in our community. These job and training opportunities will change lives. These opportunities could stop our youth leaving South Australia or becoming disengaged, and we all know the problems in our community from that. We are here to represent our community's best interest. We are focused on building capacity in South Australia. We are focused on the well-being of every South Australian. Our community voted us into government because of our platform to create jobs and deliver better services. This government will ensure that South Australia's training budget is targeted effectively at delivering skill outcomes that lead to real jobs and real careers right here in South Australia. I truly believe our Skilling South Australia initiative will build our capacity and at the same time give our people, businesses and industry confidence and more hope for the future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Member for Ramsey. Thank 